Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today, we're going to take a withdrawal from the Knowledge Bank. On episodes like these, I take you through a specific aspect of the Commander format. This show and episodes like this one are possible because of viewers like you. So if you're looking for some easy ways to help support the show, make sure you like this episode and share it with friends. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Thank you to everyone who's already purchased our merchandise, it really does help support the channel. Another easy way to support this channel is by using our TCG Player affiliate links. So make sure that you're looking for those links in the description whenever you're buying a deck or just individual cards. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. Today let's go over some staple substitutions. The commander format has plenty of great staples but some can get a bit expensive. So for some of these staples it might be a good idea to have a budget alternative in mind. For these alternatives, I'm only going to be considering cards that can be used in the exact same deck as the staple. So they either have to be the same color, or they have to be an artifact or a land. And these alternatives are going to be significantly cheaper than the staple. First up, we've got the expensive commander staple, Rhystic Study. It's an enchantment for two and a blue, and it says, Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays one. Thanks to this card, you might hear that infamous phrase, Are you going to pay one for that? The amount of cards that this can draw you in one game is absolutely absurd. Whenever any of your opponents cast a spell, now they have a very tough choice. They either choose to be taxed or they let you draw a card. Now, some opponents will try to work together and agree to pay that tax. But more often than not, as soon as one player stops paying it, the other stop too. And a deck like a Storm deck really can't afford to pay that tax ever. For their game plan, they're working to cast as many spells as they can in one turn. The amount of value that you get throughout the game for just three mana is absurd with this. And enchantments can be very resilient permanent, so this is probably going to stick around for quite some time. Rhystic Study is a fantastic card in the vast majority of decks that have blue. It's a cheap and extremely efficient draw engine that sticks around. And drawing cards is always going to be important in Commander. And because of that, its price is nearly $20. Its only real reprint was back in 2012 in Commander's Arsenal. So even though this card is pretty much useless in other formats, the demand in Commander is high and the supply is low. But as always, if you don't want to pay up for Rhystic Study, there are some budget alternatives that you can consider. First up, there's Mystic Remora, which comes in at $3.88. While this might not be the most budget card, it's still a lot cheaper than Rhystic Study. It's an enchantment for blue and it has cumulative upkeep of 1. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays 4. So Mystic Remora is cheaper to get out, but it won't stay on the board as long. Because in order to keep it on the board, you have to pay that increase in cumulative upkeep each turn. It's definitely going to be worth keeping around for a few turns though. Because you're pretty much guaranteed to draw a card every single time an opponent plays a non-creature spell. Many players won't even pay the 1 mana tax for Rhystic Study, so chances are low they're going to pay 4. If you're able to get Mystic Remora down early, it can be especially effective. Many players will be setting up with mana rocks, and they're not going to be able to pay that tax even if they wanted to. For a very small investment, this can get you some great card advantage. Now, the longer you choose to pay to keep this around, the less efficient it's going to be. But since you can choose to stop paying whenever you want to, you can do it when it's beneficial to you. Over the course of the game, it's not going to provide you as much value as Rhystic Study, but still a great draw engine. But another budget alternative to consider is Kamena's Awakening. Currently, it's just $0.29, cents, so it can fit in pretty much any budget. It's an Enchantment with a send that costs 2 blue blue. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws a card if you have the city's blessing, and said only you draw a card. So essentially this might start off as a draw engine for the table, but then it becomes a draw engine just for yourself. In Commander, it's typically very easy to get the city's blessing, so it doesn't take too long until you're the only one who's gaining value off of this. Now this card is nowhere near as effective as Rhystic Study. Rhystic Study not only costs less, but it can't help your opponents draw cards. The one thing that Commander's Awakening does have over Rhystic Study is that it's a guaranteed draw each turn. With Rhystic Study, there is a chance that your opponents aren't going to be casting too many spells and will be paying for that tax. The vast majority of the time, Rhystic Study will be better though, but Kamena's Awakening is still a good card. Drawing one card a turn for 4 mana is not a bad rate, and you really can't beat the price at just 29 cents. Next up there's Monastery Siege, which comes in at 40 cents. It has the exact same cost as Rhystic Study, and while it won't help you draw, it can help you loot. If you chose cons when it came into play, at the beginning of your draw step you draw an additional card, and then you discard a card. Now looting is not card advantage, but it is card selection, and too many times people undervalue how effective card selection can be. Essentially each turn if you have a dead card in your hand, you can ditch it for a new card. Now looting doesn't increase the quantity of cards in your hand, but it does increase the quality. Rhystic Study can draw you a massive number of cards for a low investment. It's hard to compete with that kind of efficiency, and there really aren't any other cards exactly like it. But there are cards like Monastery Siege that are still very effective in their own way. Monastery Siege also has the upside that you can choose its other mode too if you need to, but it's a fantastic card selection engine when you need it. Another one of my personal favorites is Trade Routes, which comes in at 76 cents. It's an enchantment for one into blue, and it says, Pay one, return a land you control to its owner's hand, and pay one, discard a land card, draw a card. In my opinion, this card is extremely underrated. Essentially, that second part means that every single land in your deck has cycling for one. For most decks, the later the game goes, typically land cards are a dead card in your hand. So again, while this isn't card advantage, it is card selection. And on top of that, if you need to, you can bounce a land back to your hand to discard it and draw a card. Now, you do have to pay for these abilities, but they are well worth it. Rhystic Study is more of a put-it-down-and-forget-about-it kind of 
card, but Trade Routes is still a fantastic card in its own right. For a small amount of mana, it can pretty much eliminate any dead draws for you. Next up, there's Everwatching Threshold, which comes in at 65 cents. It's an enchantment with the same converted mana cost as Rhystic Study, and it says, whenever an opponent attacks you and or a Planeswalker you control with one or more creatures, draw a card. So this can actually work well for you in multiple ways. It can give you some benefit when someone attacks you or a Planeswalker you control, or it can actually just deter attacks in the first place too. Now, chances are a lot higher that you'll draw more cards with Rhystic Study, but Everwatching Threshold can still provide value too. A card kind of on the opposite side of this is Military Intelligence, which comes in at 16 cents. It's an enchantment for one and a blue, and it says whenever you attack with two or more creatures, draw a card. So if you're playing with a very aggressive deck, this can provide you a lot of value throughout the game. And not just two mana, it's a very small investment to pretty much guarantee you're drawing a card each turn. A similar but bigger way to draw cards with an aggressive deck is Coastal Piracy. This one comes in at $3.88, which is still a lot cheaper than Rhystic Study. It's an enchantment for a 2 blue blue, and it says whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to an opponent, you may draw a card. So while this does cost more mana, in the right deck this can be even more valuable than Rhystic Study. In a deck like Tall Rand or the Locust Guide, you're going to create a ton of flying tokens that can get through. So you're pretty much going to be drawing a ton of cards with this each combat. And Binding of Mass is essentially the exact same card, but it has even more upside, and it's only 43 cents. It does the exact same thing, but it also has pay 1 into blue and tap it, creatures your opponents control attack this turn if able. So on top of drawing you a ton of cards, this can also force your opponents into some bad attacks and leave them wide open. Again, Rhystic Study is going to be better for most decks, but that's why it's got a higher price. Biden of Thassa can be much better in the decks that it's right for. Another card that can be actually more effective than Rhystic Study in certain situations is Psychic Possession. It's an aura that costs two blue blue and it says Enchant Opponent. Skip your draw step. When Enchanted Opponent draws a card, you may draw a card. So essentially, the more your opponent draws, the more you draw. They're going to be doing all the hard work for you and you're just going to be benefiting from it. If someone plays a Rhystic Study and you put this on them, you're going to gain value from it too. And if they have other ways to draw cards, you're going to gain value from that as well. In the right meta, this card can be an absolute bomb. If there's a player in your meta who likes to draw a ton of cards, definitely consider this option. And at 49 cents, this card is very much a budget-friendly card. Next up, there's Mind's Eye, which is somewhat similar, and it comes in at $3.42. It's an artifact that costs 5, and it says whenever an opponent draws a card, you may pay 1. If you do, draw a card. So unlike Psychic Possession, this works on all opponents, but you do have to pay for it. This might not be your best option in blue, but this can be effective in other colors. Still, depending on your meta, this could be a consideration. Another card that does cost quite a bit, but can draw you a ton of cards throughout the game is Mind Unbound. It's just 47 cents, so it's a very budget-friendly card. It's an enchantment for 4 blue blue, and it says at the beginning of your upkeep, put a lore counter on Mind Unbound, then draw a card for each lore counter on Mind Unbound. So the longer this card stays in play, the more cards it draws you each turn. Also, if this card is in a deck that can proliferate, you've got ways to expedite those lore counters. So while this card has a large investment to start off with, it can provide you a lot of value in the right deck. And finally, let's take a look at Nezahal Primal Tide. It's currently just under $2, but has a lot of tech, so let's get into it. It's a 7-7 Elder Dinosaur for 5 blue blue that can't be countered. It gives you no maximum hand size and says whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, draw a card. And you can also discard 3 cards to exile Nezahal and return to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So first off, this does cost a lot more than Rhystic Study to get out. But once it's out, it's an incredible value. It can't be countered, so unlike Rhystic Study, your opponents can't stop you from getting it out. It also gives you no maximum hand size, so you're not going to be wasting any cards that you draw with it. Unlike Rhystic Study, Nezhal also guarantees you drawing cards off of cast spells. Now those spells do have to be non-creature spells, but again, unlike Rhystic Study, there's no way for them to pay to stop you from drawing. And unlike Rhystic Study, Nezhal can also protect itself. Just by discarding three cards, you can protect it from board wipes or targeted removal or whatever you want. Rhystic Study definitely does not have that option. Again, the mana investment for Nezahal is a lot higher. But if you're in a deck that can ramp quickly or cheat creatures into play, this is a fantastic draw engine for it. Like most expensive commander staples, Rhystic Study does not have a direct replacement. But as I just showed you, there are plenty of great budget alternatives that you can keep in mind. But now let's tackle another expensive commander staple with Path to Exile. While it's nowhere near as expensive as Rhystic Study, sold $8.56 and it's not fitting in any of my budget decks anytime soon. It's an instant for a white that says, Exile target creature, its controller may search their library for a basic land card, put that card onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle their library. If you're looking for a spell that can remove pretty much any creature, this is pretty much as efficient as you're going to get. One mana to exchange a land for someone's best creature is usually a good deal. On top of that, if you need to, you can actually just ramp yourself with this by exiling your own creature. But this card is definitely used more so for removal. In terms of budget alternatives, the first one that comes to mind is Swords to Plowshares. It's currently $1.42 and it's an instant for a white. It says exile target creature, its controller gains life equal to its power. This card actually might be better than Path to Exile in a lot of situations. Most of the time when it comes to letting someone gain life or ramp, you'd choose them to gain life. Access to mana just typically seems to be more important in Commander. The price difference between these two cards is most likely because of the modern format. Path to Exile is legal in that format and Swords to Plowshares is not. If you're looking for low-cost creature removal though, both are great options. Another one to consider though is Condemn which comes in at 27 cents. It's also an instant for a white that says put target attacking creature on the bottom of its owner's library, its controller gains life equal to its toughness. In most scenarios, exiling a creature is probably slightly better than putting the creature 
creature on the bottom of the library, but putting the creature there is still very effective removal, and again, allowing them to gain a little bit of life is no big deal. The drawback to this card, though, is that the creature has to be attacking. There are plenty of times, though, where this efficient removal spell can come in really handy. Next up, there's Gaze of Justice, which comes in at 9 cents. It's a sorcery for a white, and it's got flashback for 5 and a white. As an initial cost to cast it, you have to tap 3 untapped white creatures you control, and you remove target creature from the game. So in the right deck, this can be an effective removal spell, but keep in mind that it is at sorcery speed. So our other instant speed options are pretty much always going to be better than this. Next up, there's Dispatch, which can be even better than Path to Exile in the right deck. It's an instant for a white and it says tap target creature and it's got metalcraft. If you control three or more artifacts, exile that creature. So if you have metalcraft, this is a path to exile with no downside. And at just 71 cents, it's a very good deal for the right deck. Next up, there's Chain of the Rocks, which technically can be put in any white deck. Although it really only works if you have a mountain, so you need some red. It's an aura for a white and it says enchant mountain you control. When Chain to the Rocks enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until Chain to the Rocks leaves the battlefield. So in the right deck, this can be efficient and cheap removal as long as your mountain sticks around. In a deck that cares about enchantments, this might be very effective. And at just 29 cents, it's very budget friendly. A similar card to consider is On Thin Ice. It's a snow enchantment aura for a white and it says enchant snow land you control. When On Thin Ice enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until On Thin Ice leaves the battlefield. Now, snow lands aren't exactly the cheapest, but at 49 cents is a good option to consider if you already have them. Next up there's Soul Snare which comes in at 13 cents. It's an enchantment for a white and it says pay a white and sacrifice Soul Snare, exile target creature that's attacking you or a planeswalker you control. So overall this costs more than Path to Exile to exile a creature. But just by having this in play this can be a fantastic way to deter attacks. But the closest comparison to Path to Exile might be Winds of Abandon. It's a sorcery for one and a white and it says exile target creature you don't control. For each creature exile this way its controller searches their library for a basic land card. Those players put those cards onto the battlefield tapped and shuffle their libraries. And its overload cost is four white white. So at a base level, this is a slower sorcery version of Path to Exile that cannot target your own creatures. But when you overload it, this is essentially a one-sided board wipe. Now this can ramp your opponents a lot, but if you're willing to deal with that, then it's a fantastic addition to your deck. At $1.35, it can fit into a lot of budgets too. And then there's Declaration Stone, which comes in at $0.44. Cents. It's a sorcery for one and a white, and it says, Exile target creature and all other creatures its controller controls with the same name as that creature. That player investigates for each non-token creature exiled this way. In the vast majority of situations, Path to Exile will be a lot better. But Declaration and Stone can absolutely devastate a token deck. So if you have one of those in your meta, it's something to consider. And finally, there's Journey to Nowhere, which is $1.03. It's an enchantment for one and a white, and it says, When Journey to Nowhere enters the battlefield, exile target creature. When Journey to Nowhere leaves the battlefield, return the exiled card to the battlefield under its owner's control. This can be an effective form of creature removal, especially in an enchantment themed deck. When it comes to effective creature removal, there are a ton of cheap options in white. Swords of Plowshares is probably up there with Path to Exile, but the other options aren't too bad either. And if you haven't seen my previous Staple Substitutions episode, check it out here. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. In the comments below, let me know what your favorite budget alternative is. And make sure that you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future Commanders for deck techs. There's even a general level tier where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget Commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one.